Then another time when I'm walking point, I'm walking down the trail and I stop and st across the trail is a spider web. In the center of the spider web is a spider. Body length on the spider was about this big. Mm. Leg tip to leg tip, he was about this big. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, how do I get through this guy? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this guy's poisonous. I don't know. I leveled the shotgun and blew him away. <laughs> and a slack man comes booking up about maybe 25 feet behind me. What? What? I said, spider. <laughs> <laughs> he just shook his head and <laughs> went back to his Oh, position. spider, okay then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your least favorite part about a helicopter ride? Coming in. Why? Because that's when you could get hit. When you're up high, you're fine. Yep. Coming in, and that's the tenth time in a helicopter. And I remember we were coming in to 1LZ, landing zone, and uh, we were about three birds out, maybe, to land. First bird went in, sat down. Second bird went in, unbuckled my belt. Second bird starts to lift, gets hit. My bird does this. I'm unbuckled, and I start sliding out of the bird. Yep. If it wasn't for the crew chief in the helicopter who grabbed the back of my pack, Mm. I would have gone out the helicopter and a couple of hundred feet to the ground. Yeah. And uh, so out of all the guys, it's one of the guys I definitely know I owe my life to. Mm. Uh, the boys in the helicopter guys, some of them are just uh, pilots. We had one guy, we, they called him Dangerous Dan, and uh, he had a bullseye on the side of his helmet. Uh, and uh, that guy would come in anywhere. Um, we called him Dangerous Dan because he was, most of the time he was a heli he was a medevac pilot. And that guy um, would come in anywhere, you know, I don't care how much fire was going on. Hmm. And uh, the helicopter boys were, they were unbelievable. Now did the other helicopters hover and guard helicopters that were coming into the land or were there specialized helicopters? There, was, that there, were, there, were, there were Huey gunships and you might have a Cobra as support um, and, and a Cobra uh, was a specialized it's very specialized of, of the Huey of the Huey yeah right. the Cobra was a gunship I mean an out and out gunship pure and simple the Huey the Huey gunships were Hueys that they just added guns to right but the Cobra the Huey Cobra was the predecessor of the Apache and it was a, 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 a special gun platform that's all it was right excuse me <clears throat> and still flying today. And still flying today. Yeah, uh, National Guard, uh, Marines, they still use them. Yep. Um, two person crew, pilot, a gunner. Um, they could dive at, I think, something like 220 knots and fire all guns at once at like a 60 degree angle mm. and only slow down two knots. Mm. And it had mini guns, rocket launchers, grenade launchers. It was uh, something to you know, fear. Yeah. yeah. They used to run what we called um, cat and mouse shows. They'd take a loach, one of these egg-shaped observation helicopters. Yep. Very fast, very quick, very nimble. OH-6. Yeah. And light observation helicopter, that's right. why it's loach. Uh, they'd run them kind of low to the ground. Meanwhile, sitting up here is the Cobra. The cobra. They open up on the loach the Cobra just dives down and wipes them. Makes a hole in the ground. Makes a hole in the ground. Yeah. Minigun capable of putting out enough ammunition in a single pass to put a bullet in every square inch of a football field. Mm. So, I mean, whatever's down there is in serious trouble. Get because hit. he's getting the miniguns and he's getting the rockets, and he might even be getting the grenade launcher. Yeah. So. You want to give us a weather report? <laughs> Most of the time, hot and steamy. Yep. Then monsoon season comes in, and it can rain for five, six, seven days straight. And we're talking downpour rains. I remember we were in the middle of the monsoon season one time, and we were waiting to be resupplied. And we had gone, I don't know, 
three days, four days without getting resupplied. We were out of food. We weren't out of water because it was raining so damn hard that we could get all the water we needed. But we were out of food. And they couldn't get anything into us because of the weather was so bad. So we went almost five days without food before they finally dropped it. Mm. Luckily, we weren't moving. We were based up and, you know, so we didn't have to worry about it. But it took them five days to be able to get air support to bring us in. Then the air support comes in and, of course, they drop the food. And they drop the blivets. One of my favorite things. And a blivet is? A blivet is, well, it's five pounds of crap. And, I mean, 10 pounds of crap and a five pound bag. No, uh, it's a round bladder, kind of looks like a big barrel. Right. It's rubber. And they could have typically been used for water. Water, fuel, fuel okay. uh, whatever, liquid. Right. In this case, they were water. And when they drop the blivet, they just drop it out of the, out of the helicopter. And it comes down, it hits the ground, it flattens out like a pancake, and then springs back up in the air. <laughs> and it comes down and flattens back like a pancake. So it's basically like a Super Bowl, you know, boing, yeah. boing, 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 boing. And whenever they drop one, you run because you never know which way it's going to go. bounce. You? <laughs> and how many gallons are in one of these things? Uh, hundreds and hundreds of well, gallons? Well, it's, it's bigger than a 55-gallon drum, so I'd say probably maybe it's a double 50, maybe 110 gallons. 110 gallons, yeah. and, and a gallon yeah. of liquid weighs and eight pounds. Eight pounds. <laughs> so you're talking 900 pounds of uh, water. So yeah. yeah, when it hit the ground, you ran. It's a like candle pin bowling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So you mentioned personal weapons. Did you have one, and what was it? Personal weapons changed all the time. Right. Because, as I said, they were captured weapons. And so when I was there, uh, I, over the time I was there, I had two personal weapons. I had a 38 snub nose. Mm -hmm. Saturday Night Special. Uh, no, it was a Smith. It was a good brand. Yep. It, was, it was just a you know, small pocket gun. But typically we're talking about a tiny yeah, little a pocket gun. gun. Yep. It was you know last resort type of personal weapon. Uh, and then I had a uh, captured nine, ten round, nine millimeter, mm -hmm. and um, those are the two things. And usually, you got them from somebody who was leaving country, because who was heading home because they couldn't take them home with them. Yep. There was the rare AK that you could get your hands on, but you paid through the nose for one of them. And yeah. you, know, you might pay two months' pay to get an AK-47. Sure. But um, the pistols. Hey, I'll trade you uh, this for that, or uh, here's something you can take home. Give me that, but you can't take home, and you know. So you, you know, just part of it, and just about every buddy had a personal weapon of some form or other. Mm. I remember my <laughs> when I was in Germany, I bought a switchblade in Germany in Solingen, Germany, which is very famous for their steel. Right. And I bought this beautiful stag-handled, really well-built switchblade. So I brought it home with me, and when I uh, went to Fort Lewis, Washington, uh, I couldn't take it on a plane with me. So I left it home, and I said, you know, when I get to where I'm going, maybe you can mail it to me. So a couple of months after I'm in country, I get a care package from my grandmother. And care packages were cookies, sundries, you know, just anything they could send you, a little bit of home, you know what I mean? And in, in this one was cookies and some sundries and stuff. And in the, she sent a tin with cookies in it. And in the tin was this tin foil wrap about, something wrapped in tin foil about this long and about that fat, and I knew exactly what it was. So I opened it up and I said, hey guys, look what my grandmother sent me. <laughs> uh. And then one day I left it, um, I left it sitting, accidentally sitting on my bunk, and somebody decided they liked it. Yeah. And that was the end of it. So the Central Highlands were fairly mountainous terrain. Yeah, very tough terrain. So you were up one side of the hill, down, down the, the other, other side, side of the, the hill. hill. Yeah. The thing about the hilltops were, I mean, which is where they made the military intelligence. Always amazing. Uh, they went, I remember one time we built a, they built a, there were three hilltops. Boom, boom, boom. Guess where they built the hilltop? The fire base. The one in the middle? The one in the middle. So now there's high ground. And the next thing we know, we're getting mortared, we're getting this, we're yeah. getting that. And so they... Uh, because you take and hold the high ground. Yeah. So they kept on sending patrol after patrol up there, trying to get those guys out of there. 
And we were calling for airstrikes and calling for airstrikes. Oh, everything's busy, everything's busy.